Thank you, Father. Father, we pray right now that you would just let your spirit fall fresh in this place, God. As I begin to open up my mouth and speak, God, the words that you've given me to speak on this day, God, we ask that you will let your word come, God. Father God, let the hearers hear, God. And Father God, help us to be doers of your word. Father God, we ask that you would just increase in me, God. Let me decrease so you can increase, God. God, we ask that you would get the glory out of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Give an honor to God, who is the head of my life. It is a blessing, amen, to be back in this pulpit one more time, amen, hallelujah. I just thank God for just keeping me, blessing me, protecting, and not only me, but all of you, amen. It's good to see you here this morning, amen. Giving honor to Pastor Terrell, Sister Tony, happy anniversary to you all, amen. God bless you. The 17th pastor's anniversary, amen. It's a blessing to have been a part of at least 16 of those years. Amen. And I thank God for you all, such wonderful leaders, great leaders. We thank God for you. Amen. Now, we're not going to put on prolong the time. I'm just going to get rolling. I um, do, do want to say this, giving on to my husband, amen, deacons, mothers, members, friends, all of you giving honor to you and thank you for just being in this service on this morning. Um, I was preparing, I, I knew we had to speak Pastor T and I had gotten my word together early on, like maybe last week sometime. And I was like, okay, I'm ready to speak. So then um, it just didn't dawn on me, you know, so Tony called and she said, well, you got to, Pastor told me to tell you, you got to speak Sunday. You're speaking Sunday. And so I said, okay. And I didn't think any more about it. Just like, I got my word, you know. So then, on Wednesday night, when um, Pastor T asked for announcements, Jamie said, no announcements. Then Sister Tony looked at her like, no, okay, let me, I'll make this announcement. So Sister so Tony got ready to make the announcement about Pastor's anniversary. And Jamie jumped up, oh, no, 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 no. We're having our pastor's anniversary. You know how Jamie is. So she did that, and it still didn't dawn on me that it was pastor's anniversary, like you're speaking is pastor's anniversary, you know. So I just went on, and then that Thursday, I was like, ooh, it's pastor's anniversary. I got to speak. That word I got is not going to work for pastor's anniversary. I got to get a pastor's message together. So... All over again, amen, I had to prepare another message. But I thank God just for the Holy Spirit. And um, I thank him, you know, like when you rely on the Holy Spirit, um, it will just help you and teach you. And so um, it began to come to me, and I got my word together, typed it up, got ready to print it out of the computer. Printer didn't work. Like, what is wrong with this printer? I got to start writing. I got to start writing. Remember, I just said, rely on the Holy Spirit. So I'm trying to write word out, and I got to one page. I got to two. I'm like, I can't write. I just, I'm just going to have to rely on the Holy Spirit. So Sister so, so Lanita came in there. She said, let me, let me see if I can help you get it printed out. We could not get it printed Johnny came, he tried to, he can't print it out. I was like, okay, I'm not supposed to do that. So I didn't worry about it anymore. I told her, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're just going to roll with it. So I'm just going to speak to you um, on the word that the Holy Spirit gave me and um, pray that it'll be a blessing to you. I do thank the Lord for seeing my auntie come in who, who pressed away, amen. Um, didn't have to be here, but she came, amen. And I thank God for, for her. Amen. So we're going to go to the um, book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 3 and 15. When you find it, you may stand. Amen. We'll read it. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge 
and understanding. You may be seated. Amen. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I do want to say that since I've been under the leadership of Pastor Tara, he's done just that. He's fed us with knowledge and understanding. He gives us an opportunity to, you know, ask questions that we, or things that we don't know or we don't understand. We can ask those things and he will answer, give us an answer for it. And I thank the Lord for that. My topic is a time to appreciate the gift. And, you know, Pastor T has spoken to us so many times and he's said that he's the gift to this church. All of us, we had to come here and join this church as a member. But Pastor T, he was given to the church from the Lord as a gift. So we need to appreciate the gift. Now, you know how it is when you, you buy a gift or you get something. You may buy a gift for somebody else or you may buy a gift for yourself. And I'm just going to use Sister Jamie for example. She just bought this new Cadillac. And you know when you buy a gift and she's parking it in the front, want everybody to see I got a new gift from me to me. Amen. Here you go, Jamie. So when you have a gift that a gift that you appreciate, you take care of that gift. Now, if you buy something that you don't appreciate, you may play with it for a little while like kids and kick it over in the corner. You may lose your gift or whatever. But if you got a gift that you appreciate, you take care of it. You take care of it. Now, I bet you, Jamie wouldn't like for anybody to just come outside and start a conversation with her and start leaning all on her car. You know, she's going to be looking at you like, I don't know why you don't know, but you need to get up off this car. So, if you got a gift that you appreciate, you ought to take care of it. We have a wonderful pastor here, and we appreciate him. And we ought to do our best to try to take care of Pastor T. And we know the Lord, the Lord's going to take him. The Lord got him. Sister Tony, she's, she got him. But as members, we are, ought to do our best to take care of Pastor T. And what I mean by that is, you know, not, not just putting a lot of, you know, stress and burden and this and that on him, but things that we can take care of on our own, we ought to do it. And the things that we need him for, then we can go to Pastor T. Um, I want to talk about discipleship. That's a relationship with God. Okay? It's the process of maturing in your Christian walk. Discipleship. Okay? So, if you're maturing in Christ, you're in that discipleship mode. Now, a disciple is someone who follows. Okay, you follow your leader. All right? So if you're following your leader, then whatever the leader tells you to do, you do that. If you, if you are a good follower. Now, in the Jewish tradition, when um, a rabbi would um, study, they studied, the, they studied the Torah, they studied the Old Testament, they studied the scribes, they studied... Um, just a lot of laws and different things, and they memorized those things. They memorized all of that stuff, and they could tell you that information. A student that wanted to be underneath a rabbi, because a rabbi was considered as a master teacher. So any student that wanted to be underneath that rabbi, he had to be a great student, already doing exceptionally well in his study, 
And then that student could become a student underneath that rabbi. So what I'm telling you is Pastor T is a, a master teacher. And we ought to get this information and, and walk closely behind Pastor T. And when you follow, um, sometimes your following may not necessarily be right behind. You may, like, if you make a turn or something, you kind of get to the side a little bit. I asked Eris, I was at home, I said, Eris, come here. And um, she said, what? I said, I want you to do something for me. So Eris, come here. She said, Mama, you better not call me out in church. I said, I am. We did, um, like, in school, in school, I would teach a class called Creative Movement. So in Creative Movement, we would do something called mirroring. So when you mirror someone, it's everything you see in the mirror. Whatever you do in the mirror, you know, you, your head going to go that way. Go, so you mirror. So Eric's going to mirror me. All right, so that's called mirroring. Turn around, Ares. Matching is, if I stick out this foot. Ares. Okay, now listen. I'm the leader. Ares can't all of a sudden decide, I'm the leader, and I'm going to start leading, because she's supposed to be matching and following me. So you don't jump out in front of the leader and decide you want to start being the leader. Because you're supposed to be a mirror image. You do what the leader does, OK? Follow the leader. So I thought that that was a, um, a good illustration for us to see. You know, Sometimes you know, following the leader may not be just necessarily behind the leader but you're following what the leader is doing. You're following what the leader is saying because the word of God said that I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you knowledge and understanding. So that's that knowledge. When you begin to do something other than just following behind, just following from front. Okay, pastor, what have you taught us? What are we going to do? Well, I taught you to do this. I taught you... You know, knowledge. So we begin to do different things. Okay? Now, I want to talk about um, Moses. When the Lord had given Moses all of the directions, instructions, and the things that he wanted um, the children of Israel to do on Mount Sinai, at first he was giving him the different um, instructions on how he wanted to build the um, tent, the tabernacle, things in the tabernacle, giving them all of those instructions and everything, how he wanted built. And then he, he chose men that were well able to do it. And um, while he was telling Moses all of these things, and he got to the end of all of these instructions, that was um, Exodus chapter 31, got to the end, and then he gave Moses two tablets with the commandments, written on the tablets. And then Moses was getting ready to come back down off the mountain. But the people at the bottom of the mountain that he had left down there, they were waiting. But then they got, I guess, tired of waiting. So they started just getting crazy. Let me just stop right there for a minute. See, Moses... He was talking to God, and he was getting instructions. And he didn't want anybody to come up there with him to get the instructions. So a lot of times when Pastor T is like studying and getting his word, and we ask him questions, and we ask him this and that and that, he don't need nobody to keep knocking on the door. Pastor, why need, Pastor, I forgot the, Pastor, did I, Pastor, can you do this? Pastor, and when he's trying to get the word, he don't need nobody to keep interrupting. So, then, when you get tired, because Pastor T trying to get his word, 
and you got somebody blocking the door, saying, Pastor, no, you, can't, mm -mm, you can't go in right now. Pastor's trying to get a word. You call Pastor T, and Sister Tony may say, well, he, he can't take your call right now. I have him to call you back. You get tired, and then you start complaining. Like the children of Israel, they should, I'll go and I'll take care. I'll do it myself. He ain't tell, he ain't help me to give me to tell me what to do, so I'm just going to go on and do it on my own. Don't jump off and start doing things on your own. Because that's how the children of Israel did. They went, they went to Aaron and they said, Aaron, it's taking Moses too long. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know why it's taking him so long to come back down here. But we need you to just build us a God that we can worship. Somebody that, that, that can lead us. So Aaron, you would think that he would know not to do that. He knew that the children of Israel had already been in trouble many of times for worshiping idol gods. He went right on and told those people in that camp. He said, okay, all of the women, the children, I want y'all to bring me all your jewelry. Bring it to me. Put it in my hand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a calf. So he got all of their jewelry, and he melted it, melted it down, and he made a calf out of it. And the children of Israel started worshiping that calf. Turn back to idol gods. When Moses came down, he got near Joshua, and Joshua said, I hear noise over there. I hear noise. I don't know what they doing, but I hear noise over there. Don't sound like they fighting, but they doing something. And then when Moses got near to them, he saw them standing around that calf, worshiping that calf. Moses got so upset with them he broke the law. Broke the two tablets that the Lord had given him. The Lord had inscribed, written on it with his own finger. Moses broke it. Got to those people and he said, Now look, I want all of you people that's on the Lord's side to come to me. And so the Levites started walking to Moses. Walk. Moses said, Then this is what I want you to do. Put your sword on your side. I want you to walk up and down this camp. And everybody that didn't come start, just, just kill them. Kill them. And that's what they did. But Moses had to go back before the Lord again for the rest of the people. They killed off about 3,000. But he had to go back to the Lord again to see if the Lord would forgive them for their sins. So what I'm saying is we need to make sure we stay in order, follow instructions, and appreciate the gift. Because when we start doing things on our own and we don't know what we're doing, amen, sometimes we mess some things up. And sometimes we want the pastor to go before the Lord for us. After we done messed things all up and got things out of order, then we want the pastor to try to help us straighten it out. When all we got to do is be patient. If pastor said, I'll get back with you, he's going to get back with you. He, he's going to do his best to get back with you. I know in, when I'm sitting in Bible study, Pastor T will um, always get Sister Tony. Sister Tony, write this down for me. I want to I wanna, I wanna get this, you know, the word for this. And I'm going to get an answer, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to give it. And he will. He will. And, and, and sometimes if it seems like maybe he's forgotten, you can remind, you can remind Pastor T. But let us not get out of order and start doing our own things. And listen, what we have to realize is that God, he calls us to do different things. And sometimes um, underneath a leadership, sometimes there are people there who won't stay and who won't be there all the time. Because God is calling you to do something else. But what we need to do is make sure when we get out of leadership, we need to make sure that God is calling us out of, from underneath that leadership. And most of the time when he's calling you from underneath that leadership, he's going to already let the pastor know. I mean, that you're getting ready to, to, to go. I, um, just like Minister Warrell, Pastor T already knew that God was going to call him and give him another church or give him a church 
And 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 before he knew it, and as 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 bad as we hate to let them go, we have to. Because God has something else for them. I can remember um Nicole. I, I hated to see Nicole go. She was she was the singer here. You know, she was a good singer here. I hated to lose that that instrument, that voice. But I had to let her go. Because when God is calling you to other things, then you have to go and operate in that area. So we need to make sure that the Lord is calling us and leading us when we decide to do something different. And a lot of times when um, he's calling you, it's going to be a, a thing that, that you start questioning yourself, God, are you sure? I don't know, because, you know, you're not going to be like, okay, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I heard the Lord, so I know I heard, so, and you go. Make sure that you hear the Lord calling you. Now, I did something that when I was um, thinking about Pastor T. Amen. I'm looking a little bit. I, I, I did something when I was thinking about Pastor T because I wanted to um, just do something a little different. I'm not going to be before you long because I've already given my word now. So I just pray that you um, that you've took that, that word in. But I want to just do this little thing right quick. Now, <laughs> I mean, so I did a, you know how Sister Donna has done this before when she wanted to introduce me, she would just say, okay, I'm just going to take these letters and I'm going to introduce Sister Kathy. So I took some letters because I want to describe Pastor T. Okay, so A is for he is an awesome leader. B is for he's a baptized, born again believer in Jesus Christ. C is for he is courageous, compassionate, and Christ like. And I know some of y'all saying, well, what is she spelling? A, B, C. A, B, C, just stick with me, okay? <laughs> and D is for he's dedicated, determined, and dependable. <laughs> e is for he is equipped to do the work of the Lord. F is for he's faithful to his calling. And G is for, he is God-fearing. H is for, he is full of the Holy Spirit. And I is for, he is intelligent and full of integrity. J is for, he loves Jesus Christ with all his heart, his soul, and his mind and spirit. K is for he's kind and he loves to share the word of God. L is for he loves the church. USBC. M is for he's married to Sister Tony and he's also married to USBC. I had to put Sister Tony in there first. In is for he is a noble man. He is very smart with the word of God. And O is for he believes in the one and only true God. P is for he's prayerful and he loves to preach the word of God. And Q is for he is qualified and sharp with the word of God. All it is for, he has truly been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and he is a righteous man. S is for, he's saved, sanctified, and a servant of the Lord. 
T is for he's totally sold out to Jesus Christ. And U is for he understands and he allows God to use him. V is for he is a visionary. And H is for he's the watchman of his flock. And he walk out what he preach. X is for he X out the devil completely out of his life. Yes, he does. And Y is for his answer will be yes, Lord, yes. And Z is for he is a zealous man. He has a zeal for Jesus Christ. Now I know my ABCs on Pastor T. Tell me what you think about Pastor T. Because I don't know about you. Somebody may think something differently about him. But I know that he is a child of the king. And when I think about Pastor T, I think of the good things of Pastor T. I think about how he serves the church. I think about how he prayed for the church. I think about how he's standing in the gap for us. I think about how he's an example for the church. I think about how he is a good father. I think about how he is a good husband. I think of good things when I think about Pastor T. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, like I said, I don't know, because some of you, you may be like Moses, the children that Moses led, the children of Israel. Moses thought those people loved him, but when he couldn't do what they wanted him to do, then they started turning their backs on him. They decided they wanted to go back to worshiping the idol gods. Now, Pastor T has been a leader in this church for a while now, and he's brought us from a mighty long way. Now, there may be somebody in here that's looking back saying, I want to go back to where we used to be. I want to go back to what we used to do. I want to go back to doing the things I used to do. But what I'm trying to tell you is you need to keep your eyes on the prize and keep moving forward. Because the Lord has brought us from a mighty old way. And there's no need to turn back now. Because if you turn back now, you're going to lose some ground. If you turn back now, you're going to lose your spot. If you turn back now, you're going to lose your place. If you turn back now, you may miss your exit. But you got to keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. There's another particular scripture, a story in the Bible about a man named Mephibosheth. He was a young boy. And Mephibosheth, he got dropped by a nurse when he was five years old because she was running with him, trying to hide him because she didn't want him to get killed. So when she got to a place to where they could rest and be comfortable there, she went and hid out in that place for some years. And then, and then one day the king called for Mephibosheth because he wanted to bless Mephibosheth. And see, he was hiding at first because he thought he was gonna get killed. And Mephibosheth said, is there anybody here no, no, hallelujah. Not Meshavashat, the king said, is there anybody here that knows where um, the next kinsman of Jonathan is? Jonathan was the son of Saul. And Saul and Jonathan had been killed. So Meshavashat was the next man in place to be blessed. So the king said, is there anybody here, King David, that knows the next kinsman? to Jonathan. I want to bless him. And a man named Ziba said, yeah, I think Mephibosheth is in a place called Lodabar. And Lodabar is a place of loneliness. 
Lodabar is a place where people don't want to be. Lodabar is a place of misfit. Lodabar is a place where you can't get nothing done there. Lodabar is a place where there's no communication there. Lodabar is a place where there's no pastors there. Lodabar is a place where you can't get your answer there. Hallelujah. So King David said, well, well, if you know where he is, go get Mephibosheth and bring him to me. Because I made a vow to, 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 to Jonathan that I would bless, that, 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 that we would bless each other. Amen. So when Mephibosheth heard that the king was asking for him, he got worried. Oh, what he want with me? Is he going to kill me? But he knew that if the king was calling for him, he had to go. So Mephibosheth went on to see what the king wanted with him. And when he got there, he wanted to bow down and serve the king. The king said, no, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. you. You don't have to bow down. I want to bless you because I made a vow with your, with your father that, 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 I, that as long as I'm in uh, the king, we're going we're gonna to help each other. So he began to bless Mephibosheth. He said, I want you to eat in the palace with us. I want you to come and live here with us. And, and I want your servants to take care of my land and, and the crop. And I, I'm, I'm going to give you back everything that your father owned. I'm going to restore you. So what I'm saying is, if you go back to Lodabar, after you done come up out of Lodabar, you're going to miss your blessings. If you go back to Lodabar, you won't be able to hear from the Lord like you used to hear. If you go back to Lodabar, you ain't going to be able to understand like you used to understand. Because Lodabar is a low place. And it ain't nothing going on in Lodabar. Ain't nobody doing nothing in Lodabar. Can't nobody communicate and tell anybody nothing because they don't know nothing in Lodabar. So you got to keep on moving. You got to keep on following the man of God. You got to trust the word that the man of God has given you. Hallelujah. And keep on moving forward. Don't go back to Lodabar. But keep on moving forward. Because God want to bless you. God want to take us to a place that we've never been before. He want to take us to a place that we can't even imagine in our mind how we got there. And you're going to think this little church in Rutledge, yes, if you keep on listening, if you keep on being obedient, if you just keep on moving forward, if you keep on blessing the man of God, if you keep on taking care of the gift, if you keep on allowing him to hear from God, if you just keep on praying for the man of God. See, Pastor T prays for us a lot. But what we got to do is remember the man of God throughout our day and pray for the man of God. Pray for the man of God. I said pray for the man of God. See, a lot of times you think when, when, you, when you look at Pastor T and you see he, he has it all together. And you see Sister Tony, she has it all together. But, but, but there are times in their life they need for us to pray for them. They don't need us pulling on them all the time, but they need us to pray for them and lift them up before the king. That's how we're going to take care of the gift. Encourage them. When Pastor T gives a good word, let them know that Pastor T, that was an awesome word. When Pastor T speaks a word into your life, let them know that that blessed me. When you get an answer, come back and say, Pastor T, I got my answer. Pastor T, I thank you for that. See, it's not a lot that he wants from us. It's not a lot we can really give him. But if you just encourage the man of God, and if you just take care of the gift, I guarantee you that's going to bless Pastor T more than anything we can give him. Take care of the gift. That's all I got to say, y'all. Take care of the gift. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
And what I want to say to you, Pastor T, is be all you can be. Be all you can be for Sister Tony. Be all you can be for the church. Be all you can be for the community. Because God, he's instructing you. And he's giving you a big assignment. And you, I told you before that you remind me of Abraham. You're saying, Lord, I know you're giving this to me. And I'm trying to walk it out. But how you want me to do this? But if you just go like Abraham did, the Lord will order your footsteps. I know you know this, but just keep on moving. And when it seems like you're out in the deep and you don't know where to go and you don't know where it's coming from, you just keep on standing out in the deep and the wind's going to blow your way and your answer's going to come and you're going to begin to keep on moving and people are going to look at you like how is he doing all of that but you gotta keep on moving Pastor T and be obedient to the Lord because sometimes you may stop and feel like well I don't want to feel like I'm I don't, I don't, I don't want to do too much I don't want to you know people to you know I, but you gotta keep on moving no matter what people say because you already know that you got a firm foundation in Christ Jesus. You already know that you solid in yourself. But now God wants to use you in a mighty way. And you got to just go. If you have to tell some people, well, I'm going this way. And you go that way. Because the Lord's going to bless me over here. Because whatever my foot tread upon, the Lord's going to bless it anyhow. If you think you're getting the better part of this, it doesn't matter. I'm going this way because the Lord's going to bless me anyhow. Stand still in the Lord and just see him work for you. Happy 17th anniversary, Pastor T. Amen. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. We thank God, amen, for our pastor. And a lot of times, you know, people think that maybe um, we're bragging and this and that, and, but we have to we have to encourage, we have to exalt, we have to lift our pastor up, we have to pray for our pastor, we have to stand behind our pastor, amen, and support him, amen. So it doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what people say. Because as long as you know that you're rooted in Christ Jesus, long as you know that your ankle is in Christ Jesus, long as you know that he is supporting what you do, long as you know that you're giving all of the glory to God, keep on moving. Just keep on moving. Keep on encouraging. Keep on supporting. Stay on it. Amen. Because in order for God to get done what he needs to get done, you can't be sitting on the stool of do nothing. You can't have your mind in a state of loader bar. But you got to bring it on up. And you got to let your work catch up with your mind. You got to let your work catch up with your mind. Amen? Amen. I thank you all today for just accepting and receiving this word. Amen. And just... Thank you for allowing me to speak to Pastor T. And I pray that God will get all of the glory, amen. We give him all of the glory. We give nothing to the enemy. Like I said in the message, we X him completely out of our lives. X the devil out. Completely out of our lives. Hallelujah. If you're sitting out there today and you feel like You've been in a place of Lodabar. You feel like you've been 
in a place no to where you just can't get moving. No we want to pray with you today because we got to be moving. It seems like the world has come to a standstill, but we, we as the people of God, we got to be moving. We, we got to have this knowledge and this understanding that will go above other people understanding and knowledge. Amen. We got to rely on Jesus Christ. We got to rely on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So if you're out there and you want us to pray with you, if you want to be a part of this ministry, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to come to Jesus. I invite you to come and give your heart to him today. Amen. Give your heart to Jesus. The thing that separates us from having that relationship with Jesus is sin. We were born in sin. We all sin fell short of the glory of God. But when you get that relationship with him, and you sin from that point on, you can ask him to forgive you. But if you don't ever ask him to come into your heart and you don't ever tell him that you believe him in him and you want him to be your savior, you don't have that right. So, in order for you to get a relationship, you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died, he was buried, and he has risen again. In he died for you, you that you might be saved hallelujah hallelujah come and accept Jesus I just want to um, continue to speak for a minute if you can hear me and you're listening on Facebook and you want to accept Jesus because you're tired of doing what you're doing and you don't know what else to do Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Tell him to come into your heart. Tell him, I believe in you, Lord Jesus. Tell him, I am a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. Wash me clean. I believe that you were born of a virgin Mary. I believe that you died. You went, hallelujah, to the cross and you died for me. And they buried you, but you got up with all power in your hands. Now save me, Lord Jesus. I repent of my sins. This is my prayer. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Yes, it does. Victory belongs to him. Yes, it does. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to yeah, 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 yeah. him. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. 
sur la Amen, amen, amen. We certainly thank God for Dr. Hubbard. That message, that message, that, that, that message, that, that, that message is, 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 is what we should have got out of bed this morning focused on. God, I get to come in and I just get to praise you for your gift that you've given us. In Pastor T and Sister Tony. Amen. Dr. Hubbard, beautiful message. Amen. Amen. We pray that. We certainly pray that God returns a blessing to you for that. Amen. 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 Let's give an honor to God who has held my life. To the Union Spring Baptist Church, this is us. We come from Old Mill Road to 1400 Main Street. It's been a good ride. We ain't had no flat tie. We've been on board. I thank God for sending this man of God to us and his loving wife. He told us, Lord Jesus, he had a wife, but he was gonna marry us too. I'm not gonna run y'all up and down the road. He said, some of them don't like cause I don't come free, but I belong to y'all. I come back here preaching to y'all. Y'all going to be sitting up there asleep. And that was the truth. Pastor went, been with us all the way these 17 years. I love every bit of it. I might not see 17 more. But Lord, I have enjoyed these 17 years. We thank God just like Minister Catherine said. We thank God for this gift. A lot of people don't have this gift. A lot of people can't keep a pastor 17 days, much less 17 years. Thank God. And you had a good ride. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Mother Rebecca. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to turn it over to the honorees. You know, I, I haven't been here that long, but I have a bit of a confession. My father passed in uh, 08, and at that time, at the church that I was at, I was at Browns Hill at the time, and I kind of had experienced a little bit of church hurt. And searching for a church home, the Holy Spirit sent me, told me to come to Union Springs, but I didn't listen. And only before I had to go through some things and um, some hurt, some real hurt. So when I came here, I was in a state of hurt in the way that this leader had taught the whole congregation to love. It soothed that church hurt that I had. You know, it's one thing to get hurt in the world. It's another thing to get hurt at church because that can turn you. That can. So I, I, I don't. I don't know why God is leading me to say this. Let us all be mindful of the things to we that we say to each other in church and our fellow brothers and sisters because it's one thing to experience the hurt in the world. We, sh we, we, we expect that. But to come into the house of God and experience hurt, it really hurts. But I'm, I'm, I, I, I was disobedient at the time, but I'm grateful to God that God knocked me over my head a little bit and said, boy, go where I told you to go. And I'm grateful that I was obedient to be able to sit under the leadership that I sit under, I am truly, truly grateful 
for Pastor T and Sister Tony. And I'm, 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 I'm grateful for everything that they teach us through their words and they show us also in the life that they live. May God bless you. May God keep you. At this time, Pastor T and our First Lady, Sister Tony. Y'all give him a hand. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Thank you, uh, Minister Floyd. Amen. And didn't, didn't Dr. Hubbard do an outstanding job in letting the Lord lead her? Amen. 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 If, if the Lord has ever led you and you know the Lord led you, you should be leaping in your spirit when you see the Lord leading somebody. If you haven't experienced it, or you didn't take it seriously, I understand if you have no idea what I'm saying. But when you see how the Lord uses someone, you know it's purely, purely the Holy Spirit. There should be an excitement in you to know that God is real. The Lord is still using people. He's still blessing people. He's still doing it. Amen. But if you've not experienced it or you've allowed it to wax cold, I understand that you can't connect with what I'm saying but I pray the Lord restores my big sister amen that's big sister around here amen amen that's big sister amen the firstborn of the ministry she is amen so any preacher come in after that regardless that's big sister I don't care how far you've been out I don't care where you've been in this place that's big sister because she's the firstborn of this pastor. So if you come under this pastor, you don't know more about this pastor and his pastoring than the firstborn, which is big sister. And I'm his wife. But this is my pastor. And this is my big sister. Amen. And I thank God for that. So I know there'll be a lot of people coming and as the church begins to grow and things begin to do, that's big sister. At the beginning and end of the day. Amen. And I thank God. Big sister looks out. Big sister encourages. Big sister guides. That's what you expect from big sister. Amen. She helps me out. Amen. Amen. But I thank God for all of you being here today and taking out the time. I know this was a little uh, different than the norm when it comes to pastor's anniversary, but get your head out of the norm. You hadn't been normal for a while now. Amen. So don't even look for that. Amen. It hadn't been normal for a while. I still had my birthday. Amen. I didn't do all the things I normally do, but I still had my birthday now. So when the, the question came up about the anniversary, we're still having the anniversary because it's still the anniversary if you don't let loose balloons or doves or whatever you do. It's still the anniversary. And we thank God for that. And nobody can appreciate what's yours but you. Amen. Amen. So he is our pastor. So who can celebrate him better than us? Amen. Can, you, can somebody else celebrate your child better than you? Nope. Can somebody celebrate your husband better than you? Nope. Because it's yours. Amen. Amen. So we should be able to celebrate our pastor because he's ours. If you're a visitor, you'll understand. I'm Sister T. Amen. But we thank God to have the opportunity to honor him, one who, as Dr. Hubbard said, says, asks for so little. He asks for so little. So we must undergird him with prayer that as we need to hear from him that God will still impart into him to give not just to us, but all those that listen in or read about it or come by or ask of him, whatever. Because he's not just a place or a person, I'm sorry, of wisdom just for the Union Springs but he is a person of wisdom for many, many more than, come, than the ones that come to Union Springs. So we must pray that the Lord will continue to keep him. So thank all of you for being here today and we pray God continue to bless you and keep you. Uh, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna allow Pastor T to come. I was praying during intercessory prayer and I ran after, Lord gave me a vision, I ran in there to Pastor T to share it with him because it just excited me, but also it gave me a little insight on the man that he is as a pastor. Pastor T was walking up this hill. It wasn't a steep hill like it was a, um, 
a chore for him to do, but it was foggy. He couldn't see all the way, but he knew by faith he was just going to keep going. This is in my understanding. I saw him walking. The words of what I was seeing was in my understanding, in my spirit. Amen? And at first when he began walking, there was a lot of people around, and they were members or people who gleaned from him, people who connect themselves for wisdom or whatever it is that they need. As pastor kept walking, some would sit down. He kept going, some would sit down. He kept walking, more would sit. After a while, Pastor T was the only one walking. Pastor T was the only one moving forward. And as he got further along, before he, before he got out of their sight, they said, Pastor, Pastor T, I want to go, I want to go. Pastor T would go back. He would reach down. He would help them up, and they'd start off again walking. After a while, one would sit down, another one would sit down, another one would sit, Pastor would keep walking. Just before Pastor T was out of sight, Pastor, I want to go! Pastor T came back, came back to him, reached down, helped them up again. They started off, he walked with them again. As he kept walking, another one fell, and another one fell, but nothing they did stopped him from his goal. That let me know that Pastor T's got a heart. You remember I shared, when I shared that with you? Pastor T has a heart and a love for people, that he wants everybody to come together. That's why he walked with them. But if you don't want to go or somebody else doesn't want to go, it's not that he's forgotten or overlooked you, but he can't stay in your situation. He can't stop in your issue. He's got to keep going. And though the picture up ahead wasn't clear, he trusted the journey. And he just wanted you to trust the journey with him. And he's right there with, with you. So in this vision, he was right there with every last one of them. And they fell off. He didn't. He didn't fall off. So that just encouraged me. So when you were preaching, it brought, the Holy Spirit brought that back to mind, the type of leader that we have. And his heart, a little bit about his heart. And what it's like really to pastor and pastor successfully. Amen. So I just thank God that we have a pastor who is willing to be right there with us in that situation, willing to help us up, willing to help us get going, willing to walk along with us. And the only reason the connection stops is because in that vision, the person fell off. It's not because pastor didn't want to keep going or want them to keep going. So I just thank the Lord, amen, for each of you just wanted to share that. Um, this was a while ago, but just wanted to share that and know that at a particular time it was necessary to share it. So however that ministers to you, the Holy Spirit knows. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Our pastor, give him love as he comes. Amen. Thing I, the thing I am most encouraged about right now is the thing I am most in, thank you for Robert the thing I am most encouraged about right now um, a couple of days ago I was laying in the bed and, and the Lord gave me a word and I was trying to figure out I said okay Lord is that word for the springs is that word for somewhere I'm going will I be meeting someone and um, Sister Kathy, the most, the thing I am most encouraged about is whenever the enemy ever try to play a trick with your mind again, you let him know that Pastor T says, if you ain't never heard from the Lord before in your life, I promise you. Sister Kathy, as many a time as I know I've heard from the Lord, 
I promise you, you heard from the Lord. The Lord gave me the exact same word in a different text. The Lord told me, he says, now you preach. If you lay your hands to the plow and look back, you ain't fit for the kingdom. And that's what she just preached right then. That's the message the Lord gave me two days ago. He says, you preach. If you lay your hands to the plow and look back, you ain't even fit for the kingdom. And that's exactly what she preached. If you ain't never ever done, now I'm telling you, when the enemy try to play tricks with your mind, ever again, you remember what God said through the pastor. If you ain't never heard, you heard from the Lord. God spoke to your heart. I so enjoyed that. It, it, it encouraged me. It gave me zeal. Um, and, and, and I needed that. I, I want to share, and I'm not going to be long because we our time has been well spent. We're right on time. Y'all are awesome. Um, I was, the other day, uh, Friday, I was laying on the um, the thing, what do you call it? I don't know. Anyway, they were taking my blood, huh? Yeah, I was giving blood, whatever they, the, the table. Is that what, whatever it is. It, anyway, all I know, my blood was draining in a bag. That's what I know. I mean, that's what was going on. That was really what was going on. So, so and I was sitting there, and um, and I was giving blood. And the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, just look around. And I looked around. And I saw Sister, Sister Green, and I saw Tony Margaret, and, 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 and Sister Brown. Lord said, just look around. I saw Miss Jackie, and, and I saw everybody in a collective effort working together for the good of the community. And it had nothing to do with the Springs. They were working together for the good of the community. And that's what God is calling us to. Not this little soapbox. Not that little soapbox. Not all these little individual eyes. He's calling us to a greater cause to help each other in this community. And when and when and while I was sitting there giving blood, I never and I've told y'all this two or three times. I used to be afraid to give blood. And I never will forget my mama, she's in the back. She was in the hospital in Newton County. And when I got there, they said, she's fine, she's gonna be all right, but she's had to, her blood was low, and they had to give her several containers of blood. I said, several containers of blood? They said, several. And, I, my, and stuff started flashing before me, and I sit there saying, now here you are, not a giver of blood, well able, and somebody else done had to give your mama life. I said, I'll never do it again. I'll never let the opportunity pass when I can't help somebody if I'm able. Amen, somebody. And I was laying up there and and um and I and I got the record at the spring and she said that she has had some people to give it faster but I've got the record at the spring I fill that thing up in 4 minutes and 20 26 seconds and Sister, Sister Green take about 10 or 15 in there. Sister Green Sister Green Sister Green's blood be coming out so fast you go to sleep if you watch it I mean <laughs> oh God. but it takes me less my, I beat my own record you know it takes me less than 5 minutes every time but when I was there I want to share this with you. Lord say, look around. And Lord laid it on my heart. He said, you had no idea. I said, no, Lord. And he says, you got no idea where you're going and where you're going to take us. I want you to know that God has got a greater, greater, greater future ahead of us and what he wants us to do than we'll ever imagine. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man that which he has in store for them who love him and keep his commandment. Amen, somebody. Amen. 
What y'all see, it ain't nothing compared to what God is going to do. God's going to do some amazing things. I'm telling you, when I say amazing, we're going to be sitting here shaking our heads. I mean, I can only, and I always use Pop because Pop been right here longer than most, most of us. I can only imagine what Pop feels when he sees what God has done and when he sees where we come from. I've been 17 years and it amazes me. I'm telling you, I had no idea in my mind that God would do what he's doing. So that's why I'm encouraged when he encourages us where he's taking us. Um, our, there's a shift going on. And right now the shift is more focused on community. And I'm glad Sister Kathy brought that up. It's a shift right now, y'all. And it's more about community. And that's why I want y'all mind to be, I want you to be broader. I want your mind to be bigger than just what you see at the Springs. Because God is shifting us now. And it's community-based. And God's going to do a great work. I said God's going to do a great work. I'm just tagging along for the ride, but God's going to do a great work in this community. And those of you who are who are giving up your time, giving up your talent, and giving up your treasure, God is going to bless you immensely, and, I, and I'm so encouraged by that. I'm not going to be here long. Sister Kathy has done two great a job for me to come back and say anything but amen. Can we all just say amen? amen. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know how Sherry is, is about to call them right now. I don't know how they're going to do it and I don't care how they're going to do it. But everybody who wants to go, uh, the bus will be going. I see two drivers out here and you will have to have your mask on if you go on the bus. If you drive your own vehicle, you do like you want to. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I'll we'll meet everybody who wants to be in Athens as securers, and that's what we're going to have done at. And I'm done. Sherry, you tell them to figure out how they're going to do it. They go, they, I don't worry about it. They figure out how they're going to feed us over there, but, 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 but they, they need to know we're on the way. All right. I'm done. Thank y'all. 17 years been great. Great. Tell them figure out how they're going to do it. Come on, Sister Ken. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's dismiss. We're going to take care of this gift. Amen. I think we've been doing a good job. But sometimes we just need a little, you know, words in our ears kind of help us along the way to make sure we're doing what we need to do. So we're just going to continue to just support Pastor T um, and follow him and just be good followers of the shepherd. Amen. Everyone stand. Amen. And I hope you all enjoy your day, Pastor T and Sister Tony. One thirty. Amen. Amen. So we're gonna um dismiss. I just do wanna say um thank the Lord for Sister Tony as well. Minister Tony, um, she is um just a great supporter to Pastor T, great helper, and also to this church. She is a gift to this church. As well. I mean. And Sister Tony, we love you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Let's dismiss at this time. Father, we just thank you for today's service, God. We thank you for all that you've done, God. And we thank you for all that you have allowed us to do, God, and to hear, God. We thank you for the songs, God. We thank you for um, intercessory, God. We thank you for Sunday school. We thank you for our service. We thank you for the people that you sent here to hear um, 
your word today and just be a part of this service, God. We ask that you would bless your people. And as we leave this place, we ask that you would protect us, God, and keep us, keep us um, out of harm way in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask that you would just be with us through the week and help us, God, that we would be um, better believers and better Christians, God, that we would pick up our word and study, God, and that we would pray, God, every time we think about prayer, we would uh, communicate to you, God, so that we can grow in our Christian walk. Father God, we just thank you for everything on this day. We ask that you would keep us safe. Let the love of God the grace of Jesus, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest, rule, and abide in the minds and the hearts of all of God's people until we meet again and everyone sing. Before you, before you leave.